Pinduoduo was founded in 2015 by an ex-Google engineer, Colin Huang. Huang wanted to merge the strengths of Alibaba and Tencent in e-commerce and social media respectively. Neither of these companies understands how the other makes money, Huang noted in an interview with Bloomberg. I think a few stats will help us understand PDD's huge growth. PDD is NASDAQ listed since 2018 when it was one of the biggest IPOs of the year. For the 12 months ending on June 30th, 2021, Pinduoduo's annual active buyers reached 849.9 million. PDD reported 61 billion orders in total for 2021, up from 38.3 billion from the year before, and that was driven by rising agriculture transactions. Pinduoduo controlled 13.2% of China's e-commerce market in 2021, according to eMarketer, putting it in third place behind Alibaba, 47.1%, and JD, 16.9%. Pinduoduo's model is customer to manufacturer or C to M, cutting out all of the intermediaries, except themselves, of course. Users download an app or they can use the PDD mini app within WeChat. The app's users can secure group discounts on products by buying together in bulk, straight from manufacturers. In the example here, the user can buy this infant formula as an individual shopper for 59 yuan or about eight US dollars, or they can club together with other shoppers and get it for 35 yuan, five USD instead. Making a purchase on PDD works a bit like this. Shoppers form teams and they post product listings for their desired items, usually on WeChat. If you see something you're interested in, you can join the team and help drive the price down. Of course, once you've done that, you will want to share the code. You'll want to get others on board so that you get an even bigger discount and so on. If your item listing gains an audience, it will appear in more users' home feeds on WeChat. So the viral potential of social media is essential to the success of this model. Okay, the revelation that bulk buying means lower prices probably doesn't shake you to your core. Many consumers already buy in bulk, some at large outlets and others on a smaller scale through e-commerce sites like Amazon or Walmart. You may even recall the Groupon era when we all went cuckoo for group buying, hang gliding lessons and all sorts of other <laughs> discounted nonsense. But where Groupon took a hands-off anonymous approach to social commerce, PDD incentivizes shoppers to get involved and drive prices down themselves. We typically think of social commerce as buying products from social media. That's as far as the social part goes. Pinduoduo is about using social networking to connect with like-minded buyers with clear benefits to reaching out to as many people as possible. And they're also keen to stress that shopping should be fun. There are leaderboards, animations, and all the usual accoutrement you'd expect these days. Companies can also host a store on PDD. Just this week, Beyond Meat has announced its plans to do so. PDD is closely integrated with WeChat, the everything app that dominates online life in China. But rather than seeing WeChat as simply a broadcast medium for ads, PDD identifies demand side network effects to make their platform more attractive. Now, what I mean by that is simply that the customers essentially do the marketing for them. As more people get involved, that makes PDD more attractive to other new users. As the new users get on board, they want to promote it to their friends too, and so on. So it's a virtuous cycle. The discounts are normally very significant too. Buyers can secure reductions of up to 90% versus standard retail prices on everything from tissues to TVs. In 2021, PDD spent around 9 billion yuan, which is over 1.5 billion US dollars, on R&D, the highest ever in the company's history. And the key focus is agriculture. Now, I have spoken to the company on a number of occasions, and it is always striking that they are determined to overhaul the full agricultural system, where others launch individual features such as Taobao's online grocery platform or Kuaishou's live stream option that farmers are increasingly using, PDD is set on bringing the full food system into the digital age. 
And that means training for farmers. It means providing data and insights to food producers. And it means developing a modern delivery infrastructure for a vast country. As they said in a recent interview with TechCrunch, our efforts in applying agriculture technology go beyond matching supply and demand and extend into identifying upstream technology solutions to improve productivity, nutritional profiles and environmental sustainability. This aligns PDD rather neatly with the Chinese government's plans to modernize the country. Pinduoduo currently waives commissions for agricultural products to encourage more farmers and agricultural entrepreneurs to try out e-commerce. The company also works with local partners to hold special agricultural shopping festivals to boost consumer awareness of agricultural specialties from different regions. And it's betting big on agriculture technology. It even hosted a strawberry growing competition between its own AI and strawberry farmers. The AI won. PDD has no plans to launch outside China as it still has significant room for growth in its home country. That said, plenty of international companies can learn from its model. Technology can connect consumers to farmers, ensuring a better product for the consumer and fairer prices for the farmers. What's more, PDD shows us all that social commerce can be a lot more social than just clicking to buy off Instagram. For more of these weekly high-tech specials, sign up over there. Thank you very much.